Welcome, welcome everyone on this lovely, beautiful morning here. Um, today's topic, we're gonna to be talking about um, suicide risk factors among people with disabilities. And, you know, just wanna make it clear, Roberta and I are, are not therapists or psychotherapists or anything like that. We just wanna bring awareness to the topic. Um, you know, and according to the CDC, um, adults with disabilities are three times more likely um, to report suicidal ideations. And that's from 2021. Right. Um, yeah, compared to people without disabilities. And if you are having any issues um, with suicidal ideations or need help, the national I know suicide anyone. Yeah. I know anyone. The, the suicide hotline is very, very helpful yeah. in, in giving you tools to help someone who's having uh, suicidal thoughts. And yeah, let me get that number out. The National Please. Suicide Prevention number is 1-800-273-8255. Again, that's 1-800-273-8255. And that'll also be listed down in the comment section. All right. Thank you, Sherry. That was, that's important information. Um, if, you're, if you're a human being and you're walking around on this planet, you have more than likely been touched by suicide, either an, um, an attempt, an ideation, you may have had those thoughts yourself. Um, but if you are a person with disabilities, you are three times more likely to have had suicidal ideations or instances of self-harm, including a suicide attempt. Um, they, um, many of the the research articles that I found when doing this, it was a pretty shallow dive because there was a lot of information out there. Um, both the National Institute of Health, the CDC, the Center for Suicide, Suicide Prevention, and uh, many medical schools have been studying this disparity in um, rates of suicide and self-harm among people with disabilities. And what, what I gleaned from the CDC is there, there are several groups of people who are more likely than not to commit suicide. At the top of that list are veterans. Many veterans um, are people who started out their lives non-disabled and um, after their, their service to our country are now people living with a disability of one kind or another. And ironically, we're recording this Memorial Day weekend. Yeah, that is, let's say it's purposeful yes. um, because this is something and it, it's a distasteful topic and we don't talk about it enough. We need to bring awareness uh, to what we can do as a culture and as a society to reach out to people who are on the, on the fringes. And that includes people who are veterans, people living in rural areas, people who are gender or sexual minorities. Um, and then that's, that's the CDC's term. I've not heard that used, a gender or sexual minority, but it makes sense. Middle-aged people. So I'm now in that, in that group, um, feeling good today. Um, and, you know, don't be afraid to talk to people about their thoughts. And if you don't feel you emotionally can handle that, please direct them to somebody who can. But it is a big misnomer um, that if you don't talk to somebody about it, they won't do it. Um, I am, yeah, I, I'm a personal survivor of suicide. I've had um, two very close friends and a colleague uh, commit suicide. Um, so I've been through that, um, unfortunately, too many times. That's why I say if you're a human standing you know, living in this culture, you are probably touched by suicide. I've, I've lost, two, I don't want to count. I don't want to count how many people I know that I've lost to suicide. And people who I've had to sit up with over a night mm -hmm. to just in, talk it out. And I have reached out to the Center for Suicide Prevention before for ideas at what to do. And one of the things that they said, and I'm going to pass this on to the cyberverse is if someone is talking about it, that means that they have been thinking about it. Mm -hmm. So if they are trusting you to say something, it has been in the back of their mind and 
one of the most important things that you can do is be with them. Just let them keep talking. Don't negate anything that they're saying. But if they have a plan, you stand by ready to call 911. Because yes. if, they're, if they're sharing their plan with you, that means that they have come to a conclusion that they want to conclude their in existence. Right. And the police are there to help. Um, and some police departments now, like they in our major to. city, they actually have a mental health provider that's on that the police can bring to the scene to talk to the person. And, you know, uh, medical personnel like um, fire and EMS are not going to respond in until the police secure the scene, right. especially if there's any weapons involved. Um, so that's something um, to be people, known. Yeah, police officers that I know have had special training. Mm -hmm. And it was from the Center for Suicide Prevention. So, yeah. um, and that may not be every department in the United States. Um, but hopefully you have access to somebody that can help you. Right. Um, let's get back to the disabled population. Um, again, I'm, not, oh, and you know what, I forgot. I forgot to uh, mention indigenous people are also in that group that are three times more likely to commit suicide. So it's something really very, very serious. Or like I said, I just read a list of groups of people who are more likely to commit suicide in our country. And another um, interesting fact uh, with people with disabilities is people with MS um, have one of the highest rates of suicide uh, along with spinal cord injuries. Um, yeah. And then, um, people with developmental disabilities. Yeah, are, which is close to home, isn't I it? I think they have higher thoughts, maybe not in the action part of it, but in the thoughts. Well, um, one of the things that I read about people with autism spectrum disorders, they, they scored 72% um, above the threshold for um, suicide likelihood. They... Um, there is a correlation that I, the higher their cognitive ability and the lower their social communication scores. So a lot of times people with developmental disabilities will have a very high cognition, a high self-awareness and low social communication. So what's happening is these people have thoughts and ideas and hopes and dreams, and they are not able to communicate them. These are the people who are more likely to commit suicide than anyone else in the general population. So- And this may tie back- disabled. What's up? And this may tie back to like, Roberta and I did a TED talk that should be coming out soon. Um, and if uh, that link is available, by the time this video goes live, it will be, okay. I will put it down in the comment section so you can all it's see still, it. It's still brewing now. It's yeah, <laughs> we're, we're waiting for the final um, stuff to come through. But um, it comes back to um, people with disabilities have lower employment rates. Um, They're more likely to live in isolation Yes, and be just socially isolated, only be with their family and caregivers not have a lot of stimulation and meeting new people. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things, one of the horrible things that our lockdown from pandemic did is it isolated people from each other, mm -hmm. especially the developmentally disabled community. They were mm -hmm. locked away with their families, sometimes not always in a happy, mm -hmm. um, stimulating or, or um, secure setting. Right. And it was very hard on the typical kids. So it's tenfold for the kids with disabilities. Right, right. And the adults who mm -hmm. were used to seeing friends every single day, suddenly not seeing friends. It was it was very disruptive and has um, really impacted their mental health. So if, if you know someone, if you see people like, oh, I, I see that guy every week reach out, say hi, spend, spend some time with, right. with someone. Um, it will enhance your life. Absolutely. Right? And you never know what somebody's going through in their life. And sometimes um, just reaching out, saying hi, or, you know, buying somebody a coffee um, while I was taking care of um, my partner, um, you know, driving an hour every day. Um, the person in front of me at Dunkin' Donuts bought me and my son's uh, water 
And um, with all these high gas prices and everything, it was just like, ah, uh, uh, you know. Wow, someone sees me. Yeah. Uh, I'm not totally isolated. I, I think that buying coffee thing has really um, highlighted how, how we need to connect with each other. Right. Like it's a, it's a simple, simple thing to do. There's a, um, oh, I wish I could find it. There's an anecdote. I read, I read a book about, um, and I, I'm sorry, the name eludes me, but it was a person who attempted suicide and in his description of the day he attempted suicide, he says, if someone had stopped me to say hello, even, right. I might not have made it. Right. I may not have made this attempt that, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, just like the person who bought the coffee, like I have a son with disabilities um, and my partner had, um, you know, a knee replacement, which is a significant surgery. Um, so it wasn't a fun time to be driving back and forth, taking care of my son, taking, um, you know, so it was just nice that even though this person didn't know what I was going through, it just made me stop and pause and appreciate, you know? Yeah. And feel seen. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I think that's what it all boils down to is that, you know, can we see each other? Can we reach out? If you see someone and they're and you just acknowledge their existence. It's it's so easy to stay in your tunnel and live in your misery. But if we, you know, I, I, don't, I I'm losing my words. Like, yeah, the little <laughs> things do matter, and they matter more than the big things. Thank you, Sherry. Thank you for helping me find my words because one of the things that came up again and again, no matter what um, disability group I was reading about no matter what demographic I was re reading about, social isolation was the common denominator in high risk for suicidal ideation. Mm -hmm. That coupled with displeasure in your living arrangements and displeasure in your employment. So mm -hmm. we're gonna circle back to our TED talk, which is all about how employment- Being is a part of society. It Being makes able. you part of something. Yeah. It makes you part of our culture, part of our society. And even being able to provide for yourself um, gives people buying a, that cup of coffee. Yeah. You know, or for somebody about. else, you know. Great. Do something for somebody else. One of the. Um, <laughs> it gives people a sense of belonging and that they can care for themselves. I have, I have a friend who's an adult with Down syndrome. And one of the things she loves to do is pay the check. Mm -hmm. She loves it. She has it struggles with the notion of money and like what money means and identifying <laughs> bills and things like that. But if you tell if you tell her, oh, you're buying today, she gets she she says, I'm a rich bitch. And then she'll march up to that counter with that check and money. Mm -hmm. And you know, even if it's not her money, she doesn't care. Right. <laughs> but it it's that. And I, it, despite the fact that that's a, a, a cute story, a humorous story, right. that sense of accomplishment, I right. matter. And right. that's what we, with a smile, with a hello, with a, hey, how are you? I like mm -hmm. your shoes. Any, anything like that, just an acknowledgement of the fact that somebody exists, it connects us socially. Mm -hmm. So it's not hard, a hard thing to do to be aware and to notice people. Right. And again, uh, we're bringing this up for awareness. Again, Roberta and I are not therapists or anything. We're not. How about we throw that number out there? Yeah. Again? The National Suicide Prevention number is 1-800-273-8255. If you know somebody or you, or you yourself are struggling um, or reach out to a local um, organization in your area. Um, all right. And I'm a mother of a child with Down syndrome and Roberta's a special educator and together we're bridge builders of diversity. We're trying to bridge that gap for the special needs community and the typical community so we can all live and be happy. Okay, and not <laughs> isolated anymore. Reach out and smile at somebody. Um, you don't have to buy them a coffee, but wave, say hello, say how you doing today? I like mm -hmm. your shoes. That's not a hard thing and you will feel better. Right. Um, absolutely and also to push all those buttons oh like, yes please help us 
notifications. And if you want to hear more about this topic or anything else that you might be curious about, we love to bridge that gap yeah. and build those bridges of understanding through education and, you know. Right. And hashtag let's love life. Let's all let's learn to life. let, uh, what did I just say? <laughs> let's love life. <laughs> Thank you. Too early in the morning, the tongue twister. Maybe our next topic will be memory. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing too many things at once. Too many things at once. That, that will be our next topic. Yeah. Stress. All right. Yeah. Please help us get out into the YouTube universe. And as soon as our TED talk uh, on employment for people with disabilities comes out, we will get that out to you guys and share that all with you. All right. Thanks so much. We appreciate you.